Welcome to Me and My Golf TV. I'm Andy Proudman and you've joined us here at Yarra Bend Golf Club in Melbourne, Australia. I'm here to see Dennis McDade, who's an Australian PGA golf coach. Now, Dennis has coached numerous tour players from across the globe. We've had a lot of success, but we're here to talk to him about juniors today. Now, Dennis is the head of the junior TPI advisory board, so he does a lot of work with TPI and a lot of work with the juniors here at Yarra Bend. And we're here to have a chat with him about what he does and hopefully give you some great information that you can take back to your juniors at home so hopefully the chat's going to be interesting. Let's go and see, uh, see where he is. OK, I'm here with Dennis McDay. Dennis, great to, to be here. Andy, and thanks for talking to us. Really absolute good. pleasure. Fantastic. Now, Dennis, you are obviously another golf coach, but you coach a lot of tour players around the world, and you have done for quite a long time. Now, you've had a lot of success with that. But I know you've got a big interest and a big involvement in the junior development. Yes, I have. You're head of the TPI junior, junior Advisory Board. Correct. Can you tell us about your role with the juniors here and, and the connection with TPI? Um, look, I suppose my, my, my uh, role with juniors probably came about through my own kids. Um, I was um, an assistant coach and then a head coach of the Victorian Institute of Sport Golf Program for about... 11 years okay. and um, eventually found someone who was visually impaired enough to want to marry me okay? <laughs> <laughs> and the inevitable happened we had some kids and, and basically um, my kids came along to me and said I'd like to um, learn how to play golf and I found pretty quickly that I actually wasn't that good at coaching little kids. I, I was pretty good I think at, at, at coaching elite level players but as yeah. far as grabbing a little kid that sort of had some desire to play golf and develop, developing them into a player. I, I, I really didn't have much idea and, and, um, and about the same time I'd been involved with TPI um, and Greg Rose and Dave Phillips and we all had kids about the same age and we were probably all going through the same sort of question mark, hey, what would we do? Like here's, here's a kid who's four or five years of age who I might have to look after for the next 20 years and develop for the next 20 years. What the hell, if I had that amount of time, where would I start and what would I do? And, and that's when we started looking um, beyond just coaching as, as, I suppose, just golf instruction as well and started looking at, okay, well, what sort of um, athlete do we think they should be or might need to be in 10, 15, 20 years' time? You know, what about the mental and personal development of, of a kid you know, through all of this development, you know, where would you start, what would you do? So probably looking at it globally, you know, what do we need to do and then starting to break it down into, well, what would we do in, in this period of time, right down to a daily lesson plan, if you like. So that was, that was probably the genesis, if you like, of, of where we went with TPI. And certainly from the point of view, you know, this is a business that I'm involved in here. And um, you know the junior side of, of the business is substantial, and 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 um, yeah, that's something that we're looking to build because not only do we get the chance to you know build a love for the game and 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 hopefully develop some really good golfers, yeah. but you know from a financial point of view, it's good for the business as well. Um, okay. So that's 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 where where we started with the whole junior thing. Now, it's changed pro probably more so over the last sort of five years, really, in terms of the development of the juniors and how we're coaching juniors now. Yeah. We as coaches are sort of involved in the, the sort of behind the sort of scenes action, um, but I suppose it's our job to educate the parents and the golfers of what's the correct thing to be doing and what's the sort of what things we shouldn't necessarily be doing with the kids. Now, I know here that with, with the TPI and with the stuff that you're doing, it is getting definitely more integrated with the athlete development. Yeah. Um, how have you seen that change over the last few years, and and how would you how have you implemented that into your coaching? Well, I, the, the first thing I would say is, is it's important that um, anyone involved in the junior golf industry, if you like, from, from coaches to trainers to parents, understand that there's been a fundamental um, shift in the game, if you like. Um, I, I'm not sure what, t what age you took the game up. I started somewhere between 10 and 11. Um, what, what were you? 13, I was 13, OK. So, there, so there's an example. We're getting inquiries from parents with three-year-olds. Um, can we join your junior golf program? If not, what are some of the things that we can do to get our kids ready for junior golf school? So basically, you know, from a business point of view here, 60% plus of our um, junior program are under the age of seven. Yeah. Now that's a, totally demographic, that's a totally different demographic to what um, I think golf pros are used to dealing with and we're having to upskill ourselves because the way you deal with a five, six, seven year old boy and a nine, 10 or 11 
year old boy are okay. very different. That's They're it. totally different. So, um, you know, f some of the things we need to consider is, um, you know, there are, in order to be able to swing a golf club with any sort of proficiency at all, there needs to be some sort of underlying athletic ability. You know, we've all seen kids come along to our schools and um, there's a standout kid who's a great athlete and you, you look at him and you go, wow, I, I can turn this kid into a superstar. Yeah. Um, you know, they're typically the ones that have played a whole bunch of other sports um, that, are, um, that, that are just probably developmentally ahead of the curve. But more of a concern for me is, well, what about the kid who's really underdeveloped, who's having trouble swinging a golf club? Because I want him to play golf for the rest yeah. of his life as well. And, and how do we deal with those guys? So, um, you know, fr from, a, from a coaching point of view, um, I think it's really important to understand that um, from a physical development and from a um, cognitive development point of view, we need, to understand, we, we need to understand what we're dealing with and how you go about coaching a five-year-old or a six-year-old is fundamentally different to the way we, we deal with those older kids who have had some more physical and cognitive development. Yeah. So just in, in very broad terms, with um, say, if I just use, um, you know, say that early primary school boy or girl, especially boy, um, we work on building those fundamental movement skills, you know, the, the foundation of athletic development. And any golf coaching that we provide is very much non-form based. It's, it's about creating um, general movements, like getting the, the, the address position around about where you want it, get it, the body moving around about the way you want it, you know, the arms and club moving around about the way you want it's it. very limited technical sort of technical coaching, more sort of simple stuff that yeah. it's just going to give them a... And, and the reason for that is that um, from a brain development point of view, they actually haven't got great control over their smaller muscles. They've got pretty good control over their, their larger muscle groups, but the smaller muscle groups to some extent haven't been wired very well yet. So there's no point talking in really fine detail. No. Um, you know, with those older age of, of kids, assuming there's been some, some athletic development, now we can really get a little bit more specific and detailed with what we're, we're teaching them. But there is... I, th I think the mistake that I made um, when I was trying to coach that younger demographic of kid um, or junior um, back then compared to now is I treated them like an older kid. I just thought, well, I can, they're just, a, a, just a, a, a mini adult. I can just teach them whatever I like and, and, and nothing could be further from the truth. I, I think the other thing that we, uh, that we need to look at with um, coaching our juniors is, again, we speak about a fundamental shift in the game. You know, there's been a fundamental shift in equipment. The ball goes straighter, equipment makes the ball go straighter. It allows golfers to hit the ball harder and still hit it straight. So therefore, it's becoming a more athletic pursuit. Yeah. So I think it's almost a responsibility that, that if you want to develop a, a, a junior into an adult who's going to play the game at, at any sort of high level at all, they've got to be able to hit the ball you know, a long distance and they need to be an athlete if they're going to do that. So that's, that's sort of the other you know, underlying principle behind our program as well. Yeah, and I think with, with what we've spoke about with, um, I mean, we, we, when we visited Milo and, and the fact that a lot of people still think, well, okay, if I want my son or daughter to be a great golfer, they've got to hit lots and lots of balls and that's all they've got to do. And, yeah. and I know people will shy away sometimes from getting them involved in any other sports, but we want to encourage that because that's going to bring on not only their golfing ability, but their athletic ability that's going to benefit that as well. Yeah. Look, we, we know for an absolute fact, and this is across a, a, a broad spectrum of sports, that the athletes who have achieved at the highest level lived a multi-sport culture. Yeah. In other words, they didn't, they, or, or I should clarify that, the late specialisation sports, so, you know, um, and golf is an example of that, and um, they didn't specialise in one sport. They, they, they certainly had a focus on a sport, and there's nothing wrong with, with golf being the favourite or the focus and, and playing it X number of times a week, but that definitely needs to be counterbalanced with playing other sports. Yeah. So in that younger category of, of, of a junior, those other sports should be early specialisation sports that develop athletic ability. So if you look at things like um, um, gymnastics, um, martial arts, dance, they work both sides of the body, they're putting in place those, those basic fundamental movement skills that are going to help those, those little guys. As far as playing um, um, you know, more sports in that, in that slightly older, um, say that late primary school, early high school kids, like if your golf is your focus, then sports like striking sports or throwing sports like you know, tennis and cricket and baseball, yeah. they would complement that fairly well. 
like um, cross country running and and um, and swimming is probably not going to be fantastic cool. for golf. Sort of front, isn't it? So yeah, there's no so, real rotation yeah. there. So you know those those um, those elite athletes who live that multi sport culture typically, after they built that athletic base, they would. Um, they played a number of sports that complemented that sport that they wanted to focus on. Yeah. And I think that's really important that, um, I think there's almost a misconception that the only thing that Jack Nicklaus ever did was hit golf balls. The only thing that Tiger Woods ever did was hit golf balls. But if you look at them, they're exceptionally well-rounded athletes yeah. and they played a multitude of different sports. And, and it's out there in the public arena that, that that's how, part of how they became such good players. Yeah, and I think with, with the sort of media and like you say, with people think, okay, Tiger took the sport over three years old and he, so he must have just done it all his life and done nothing else. Yeah. We know that is not the case and he's done all these other sports which has yeah. definitely helped him obviously to, uh, yeah. to get to the level that yeah. he is at now. Yeah. And if you, you know, if you want to talk about Tiger, his development coach, Rudy Duran, like there's some, um, he wrote a great book on, on what he did with Tiger and, and if you look along the lines of what we've been speaking about, there's, there's elements, of that, elements of that in there. In so, there. yeah. Great. And just, I mean, in terms of your coaching here, obviously you do a lot of juniors, great yeah. work with the juniors here. Can you give us an example of a typical session of what you do with, say, a group of, say, six to, to nine-year-olds? Or, yeah, no yeah. problem. So um, a typical session for in, in this part of the world and the way we're set up here is we would spend, um, we have a trainer come in. So we have a child athletic development specialist come in uh, who's on the payroll. So obviously yeah. the, the, the cost of our programs is a little bit above what else is in the area. But they would spend um, at least 50% of their time developing what we call fundamental movement skills. So they'd be working on um, locomotion skills. So anything used to get from A to B. So running, jumping, dodging, skipping, hopping, sliding, all of those basic things. Um, they would have um, what we call ABC. So developing um, um, agility, balance, coordination and speed. Uh, that would be the, the, the next thing we did. Then we'd have exercises that would develop their object control skills, so um, throwing, catching, kicking, striking, punching, that sort of stuff, so developing object control hopefully skills. Hopefully not each other. No, hopefully not <laughs> each other. No, they do that at home with yeah. the parents, no doubt, pulling them apart, ding, go again. <laughs> um, and then we look at um, some kinesthetic awareness, so you know, awareness of their body and the space around them, some basic rules and that sort of thing. So that would take up about half the class. Uh, maybe just a little bit over that. And then, of course, we're a golf program. There's got to be some sort of um, some, some golf development. So we would have um, some stations set up. There'd be a theme for the day. Um, so typically what we do if we're teaching something like um, the body movement in golf, we would break it down into a skill progression. So we wouldn't try to teach the whole thing at once. We might give them an overview of what we're achieving, of what we're, of, excuse me, of what they're trying to achieve. And then we would give them a small chunk to work on. And we would have them work on that from anywhere from four to six weeks. You know, one of the things little kids like to do is they like to master things. Yeah. So, and, and you need to repeat things to them. You know, they're like goldfish, they've got a three second memory. So we give them time to learn a skill, master it, um, play with it because it's, it's um, pretty much discovery phase. So we let them experiment with different things. So you'll see our kids doing some funny things at times where they're messing around funny drills and doing stuff for themselves. We actually encourage that sort of creativity. Um, and we'll have a, a fun competition, and then that's pretty much what we do. So, but again, the, the golf side of things is very much here's a, a broad general movement that we want you to try to make. Um, and by the way, whilst you're doing that, we want you to try to hit the ball between those posts. Yeah. So something like that. Um, with, our, with our next category kids, let's just say those late primary school kids, um, what we would be doing with them is... is there's about the same amount of time spent on athletic development, but now we're into what we call fundamental sports skills. So we're looking at developing, you know, some of those skills we spoke about before. You know, we'd have our young kids maybe throwing, um, the, 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 um, the early primary school kids. The later primary school kids, we might give them a baseball yeah. and have some there with a pitcher's, a pitcher's mitt and a little um, mat set up there, and we're actually teaching them how to pitch. So we move from a, just a fundamental movement skill of throwing into a, 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 um, a more developed skill of, of pitching, for example. More specific to that sort of, yes. Yeah, more specific. So it's a little more grown up, a little bit more specific. It develops those motions a little more fully. The reason we do the fundamental sports skills is there's a transfer of learning. There's a, a small but positive transfer of those movements into the golf swing. So there's still the underlying physical development plus those fundamental sports skills. Um, and then... We, uh, we do start getting into, into coaching with them as well, and it's, 
actually that late primary school age, and I'm, and I'm just doing this from a chronological point of view, rather than biological, we won't go into that right now, but in that phase before they go through their growth spurt, their rate of growth is very stable. And that's a great time for teaching mechanics. So you'll see our coaches actually being quite detailed with, with the kids in, in, in that phase. Um, there's been cognitive development. They actually they sort of understand adult code a bit more and they actually like being spoken to as adults and we get a little bit more detailed with, their, with, with what we're trying to teach them. So you know, I, I say to my coaches here that what we want to see by the time they hit their growth spurt is mini touring pros. We want them to look like mini touring pros. We want great athletes looking like mini touring pros and loving the game of golf. So, and at the moment, um, I showed you before our short game facility behind me here is just under construction. But as soon as that is finished, um, we will actually um, extend our that that class, that smash class, we yeah. call it, by half an hour. So there'll be half an hour of skills in there as well, where they're competing and, and and playing different games and different tests and that sort of thing as well. Which is again an important part for it as well. Absolutely. Look, at the end of the day, like we talk about the importance of building an athlete and and um, you know making sure they're physically literate is a term we use at, at TPI. But at the end of the day, we're a golf program as well. Yeah. You know, and and one of the things that can't be lost in this is that we do have to develop golf skills. Um, we do have to develop an ability to play the game, like that, that the whole thing, how do you actually work your way around a golf course, club selection, all of that stuff that we learned as kids. Um, you know, that, that's, that's just as important as, as, as anything else. But it's, I think we understand a lot more about what we should be doing when. Yeah. So you know, at TPI, we, we, we looked at you know, there are various um, versions of the long-term athlete development model. And we've sort of looked at that and just gone, OK, well, there's a framework. Um, you know, it's a great framework to, for developing the physical capacity of, of, a, of a boy or girl. Uh, and we've added to it, you know, one of the things I suppose to some extent that's missing from, from that model is, well, how do you develop, how do you develop them cognitively, mentally, strategically, personally? You know, to some extent, I suppose we've got a responsibility to do that as well. Yeah. You know, and that's probably the next phase from a, from a TPI development, from a TPI junior program point of view is actually um, is building all of that into the program as well. Yeah. But that, it's a bit of a minefield at times because... Well, there's a lot involved, isn't there? You know, I mean, yeah. if you can hear from all that, there's, there's it's a lot more than just swinging a golf club, really. So it's, yeah. there's yeah. numerous parts to it. But, I yeah. mean, hopefully that's give the viewers at home uh, a good idea of what you do and what you do at the facility here, which is, yeah. which is great. And uh, we've seen the classes in action. We've run the classes. The kids love the classes as well, which yeah. is, again, equally as important. Yeah. They've got to have fun, which is... Yeah. Really important. But if, if you look at, again, if I go backwards, looking at that, that younger category of kid, when you took the game up at 13, I imagine you would have had a golf lesson of some sort and yeah. the teacher would have said, OK, I want, you to, I want you to hold the club like that. And you would have gone, oh, that feels terrible. And you would have gone, well, you know what? Just suck it up. You're going to have to do that for the next three weeks and then you'll, you'll maybe start to own that grip a bit. Yeah. You can't do that with a five-year-old. No. They just go, I, I don't want to do that, I want to have fun. Yeah. So, you know, basically there's lots of games and having fun for that category. And then as they get older and mature, they can handle that sort of deliberate practice and then you, you change the program to, to, to and, suit that. And they want to get better then. They're in yeah. the stage where they think, OK, I like the game, I'm enjoying it, I want yep. to do a little bit more, I want to get better. But five years old, they want to have fun and just be with their friends and, and yep. mess around, which is... Should be fun activity. They should be able to do it with their friends. They should be able to do it. They should feel like they're welcome. How the average golf club doesn't make a five-year-old feel no. welcome at all. It does. It feels stuffy, and we need to look at that. Um, so there's there's some of the reasons that we that that you know some of the things we need to look at from a golf program point of view.